Welcome to a technical demonstration of Tailoff Systems Comfy product based upon a Quagga routing suite presented by our Principal Solutions Architect, Jan Lindblad. Okay, so in the previous clip, you saw how we were using the auto-rendering mechanism of Comfy so that we just start with a data model and all these screens, the configuration and monitoring screens, they just appear automatically. They are auto-rendered. But you can also go beyond this if you want to do some additional programming and enhance and add to whatever the automatically rendered interface looks like. And I'll show you such a thing now. Obviously, it's important when you are shipping products to the field that uh, you can say in your data sheets things like you're up and running within five minutes and so on. So in order to do this sort of thing, to get out, help the customer to get up and running with your product very quickly, one common technique is to add a wizard or some wizard that help some of the common tasks. So here's an example of one such wizard. So this wizard is something that's actually been programmed in JavaScript on top of our JavaScript APIs. So here is uh, a first screen is prompting for a few things like uh, what the interface name should be, what the password should be. So I'll type an interface name here, let's say ETH2. And I go to the next step. It's prompting me for the network mask and the prefix length as in next. Here's a summary page saying that, okay, this is what you're about to create. If I just hit save here, I'll keep these changes. But at this moment, I have not activated these changes. We are not live with them at this point. I can go here and, for example, I can view changes. Oh, here's all the changes. The wizard did a lot more than it actually prompted me for, setting up things based on my answers, setting up other things that are reasonable defaults for it. Now I can go here and, for example, say, oh, I like this wizard a lot, but I don't want this passive by default to be checked. I actually prefer it like this. So now I'm overriding whatever the wizard did for me. And if I'm happy with this, I can just hit the cl click the save button and we are live with this now. Okay. I'll also take the opportunity here to show you some of the um, operational status uh, monitoring features. So I can go here, for example, to system load. That'll show me the CPU load of the system at this moment. So uh, as you can see, the CPU load is pretty low, right around 0% or so. And there are a few context switches per second, which is what a Linux machine has in an idle state. Since uh, this is kind of boring to look at, I'll try to generate some CPU load for this machine. So I'll switch over to the terminal window here, make heavy load. So now I'm running a script on this uh, inside the Linux virtual machine uh, that's generating a lot of CPU load. And I'll switch back and you can see that the CPU load metering that Linux has built in is now mounting. The one minute average here is, is rapidly increasing. And the number of context switches per second is of course way higher right now. So if I switch back and turn it off, you can see it start to drop down again. So that's, that's great for graphical, graphic, graphical representation of what's going on in the system. But sometimes you also have other types of information, operational status information that is, let's say, more textual nature. So here is the syslog, uh, syslog file of the system. And I can just scroll down here. And as I scroll down, new entries will be loaded from the underlying data provider and just added to the web interface here. Uh, and an interesting detail here is this little uh, magnifying glass. Here I can apply a filter to this table. So let's say I want to add a condition saying that the text field should contain cron. And say run that. Now I get only the lines that pertain to cron in some way. 